Welcome everybody to Behind the Music. I want to welcome those of you on YouTube, Facebook, and those on the GX Radio platform. Well, I have a special guest this week, someone who I've known for a very long time, and a very, very, very um, good friend, uh, by the way, of Darren Ferguson. Darren is um, an exceptional young man, has a illness that he lives with every day, which we're going to talk about in a little while. Um, I just want to let you know, Jeff will be back with me hopefully next week. So I'm on my own this week. So this week we are going to look at how a young man is an exceptional drummer, but lives from day to day with a illness, which he will let you know what that is and how he faces uh, different challenges each day. Um, so I'd like to welcome, without wasting any more time, uh, Darren Ferguson. Are you there, Darren? I'm here, sir. Hey, Darren, you welcome, welcome. Bless you, man. Bless you, bless you. Bless, bless you. you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Darren, first of all, we've known each other. Um, well, I first met you, you were, you, I think you were 10 years old. <laughs> wow. And, um, and I, and, and, and I, I, I remember, um, the very first time that I went to your your dad's fellowship, um, I must say, Darren is the son of Bishop Ferguson and First Lady Ferguson from Milton Keynes, uh, Faith Dimensions. Um, he is uh, one of two sons. There is another one, Lee, also very fantastic musician, fantastic bass player. Um, in fact, you, the two of you, if I remember, the two of you back in the day, woo, Darren. <laughs> I mean, Lee, Lee now resides in the States, but I do know That's right. you guys together were quite, quite tight. And, oh, bless you. And, I, and I would have to say, um, I would have to say probably that was driven, driven by Bishop. That's who right. Is an ex-musician, Bishop right. Glenn Ferguson, bass player, woo, woo. A, a man of God, but bass player who I used to look up to back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and I know I couldn't. I, I, if I remember rightly, he he was very intricate, um, very mechanical in the way that he played um, some yeah. of his moves. So I can only imagine that he would push you and Lee, yes, yeah. to uh, to the limit. You know, he, he, I can imagine he sat there and he would hear one note wrong, and he probably pulled it off on that. <laughs> One trip it wrong, and he probably, you know, what I me, mean? yeah, but you know, it's all good, it's all good. So, Darren, listen, yeah, tell sure. us who you are, tell the viewers uh, who you are. All right, uh, where well, you've heard it, I'm Darren Ferguson, the son of Bishop Glenn and Lady Lou Ferguson. Um, I'm in Milton Keynes, yes, um, I attend the Faith Dimensions Church under the leadership of my father, um, part of the praise and worship team, I run the social media team. Um, so I'm a very busy guy, very busy guy, enjoying life. But um, yeah, man, just mm. I'm here, you know, just here. Okay, okay. but Darren, listen. Yeah. Everybody knows you. We, know, I know you as a drummer, um, mm -hmm. and people see you as a drummer. Um, but there is something else that's going on in your life that people may not be aware of. People, some people may be aware of. Just talk about a little bit how challenging it can be as a drummer especially with you being an energetic um in uh, person you know you know you, you need a lot of energy to play drums and yeah sure talk about just let let the viewers know what what you, what the illness is that you suffer with okay so from three weeks old um i was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease so basically that simply means i won't go into the ins and outs of it but it basically means i had no functioning kidneys so um, my life was literally hanging by a thread every single day from three weeks old and just growing up, um, you, you know, as a teenager came with many challenges. Sometimes I had tubes hanging out my chest, hanging out my um, my stomach, you know, for different types of treatment. Um, but, yeah, adding that illness to playing drums, it, it was crazy. You know, sometimes I should have picked up the violin. <laughs> <laughs> no man, that would you you wouldn't look right with a violin. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, nah, nah. I wouldn't. But you, you know, um, my passion really came from drums, as you said before, so rightly from my father. Mm. 
Mm. You, you know, he was a bass player. Lee learned the bass and keyboard. And I didn't really have any passion for those at all. Mm. You, you know, but coming from a musical family, obviously my mm. aunt is a singer. My grandpa played banjo. Yeah. So we didn't really have a choice. So mm. I thought, you know what, let me just get on the drums. You know, let me just make noise as you normally think as a youngster. Yeah. Um, but then I soon realized that I loved it. Mm. You, you know, this was this was my passion. Um, but at the same time playing, I realized that my health was really giving me a lot of issues, you know. So and did it get in the way? Did, did the illness get in the way of like rehearsing and, and playing in general? You know, were there times when, you know, you had to, you, you'd be playing, you'd have to stop or there were, there were days where you just have to say, you know, I can't play this week. Cause obviously you play in church. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it did get in the way as far as rehearsals, cause especially when I was a lot younger, you know, in my teens and in my twenties, I spent a lot of time in hospital. Mm. You know, so there was times that I physically couldn't be there. You, mm. you know, but as far as saying that I wouldn't play when I was out of hospital, that was never an option. Right. You, you know, my my dad always brought us up to never give in and mm. never quit and never give in to how you're feeling. Yeah. You, you know, so there was times where, to be honest with you, I was playing them drums, and there were times where my eyesight would go. Or I wow. literally thought that my heart was gonna stop. You know, so I was, you, you were pushing yourself. Pushing myself. You were pushing yourself while while you play. Even now, you, you you push yourself. I do, I do. Ever since I was a youngster, I've I've never wanted to be a typical um, chronic kidney disease patient. Mm. You know, you have a lot of patients that feel sorry for themselves. They sit at home, don't want to work, don't want to do nothing. I've never had that mindset. Right. Mm. You know, even when I was at school, um, you know, my mum used to worry about me. Don't go and play football. Don't go and do this. Mm. But I'll be right in the midst of them. You know, I'll be the smallest one. <laughs> I'll be the smallest Living one. Living life to the full. Yeah, live life to the full, you know. Yeah, so yeah. When, when I was playing, when I played drums, you know, for ministry, mm. you know, I don't take it as a joke. You know, the first thing I always think, okay, God, you spared my life. Mm. You, you know, and th if this is the only way that I can give you glory, you know, through playing drums. And yeah, to be honest with you, Kev, sometimes it was madness. Mm. Sometimes I would come home and I'm in such agony. Mm. But as I said, I never want to give the devil the satisfaction of knowing that I've quit. Yeah. Or I won't, I won't do it. Mm. You, you know, or there's times that I start playing and I'm feeling so sick, but by the end of it, I'm feeling so much better. Yeah. You know, God, God really just brings me through. So yeah, no, never quit, man. Never quit. <laughs> So you've ex so that last statement you just made, you know, where you you push through, mm. and it's like God has given you grace to just continue, and at the end of it, you actually feel like you've just been to an an oasis. Yeah, that's the pain right. You were in as 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 suddenly just left. Yeah, that that's quite powerful because that's almost like you know, definitely God God is with you. We know that. Yeah, no, no, 100, 100, 100, you know what I mean? But to, to reap that blessing, to know that God understands what you're going through, you're pushing through a physical pain that yeah. can affect you spiritually and mentally. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe God has honored you because He understands that. Oh, Obviously, because He searches out the intent of every man's heart, He knows our minds and our thoughts. Yeah. You know, and I and I really believe I hear you when you say not quitting is not yeah. an option. It's not, not. It's not. It's, it's not, not, an, not an option. I hear you. I hear you. It, it, it's not. It's, it's not an option at all. And from the physical and what we see, saying, mm. "Well, I'm going to rest today," seems like the normal thing to do. Mm. And yeah, I'm not saying sometimes you have to be wise, and yes, you do have to rest. Mm. But your healing or your breakthrough, mm. you know, will come or can come through that moment of you just taking that step of faith mm. and saying, "Okay, God, I don't feel great today." You, you know, I feel physically drained. I feel tired. But you know what? I'm going to sit behind the drum or whatever instrument we may mm. play. And we're going to give God 100 percent, 100 percent. And, mm. you know, we, you, you know, we play and we do what we, we do. But the most important thing is that God gets the glory. Yeah. God, yeah. God gets the glory about it. And, you know, I remember, Clive, 2019, uh, we had our annual conference, mm. uh, Power Encounter at church. And Clive, that was that was in June. That year was the hardest year of my life as wow. far as my health was concerned. Um, it was so bad, like 
you know, we would go out and I'd just pass out on the street. Wow. You know, and I'd wake up and I see people around me. Mm. You know, I'd go out with so my how wife. How often did that happen? How often is that an everyday occurrence? Does that is it a rare thing or is it a common thing for you? Well, 2019, it was strange because um I, I was okay at the beginning of the year because I actually mm. went to America. So that wasn't in... happening before. No, it wasn't. It wasn't right. happening before. I went to America to um, see Lee and his family. Mm. Um, came back and April, I just started to feel a bit funny. Mm. Didn't know what was going on. Um, and we had many tests. And there's something they call the hemoglobin, which is like a blood level. Got you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, mine went from eleven to zero point two. Woo! So it was critically low. Yeah. Um, you know, done blood transfusions, but mm. kept dropping, kept dropping. They couldn't find out what was going on. Anyway, so we were, yeah, I remember a power encounter came now mm. and I was so skinny. I was wearing like boys clothes. I'm, you uh. know, I'm, I'm like 38 at the time, but we're in boys mm. clothes, mm. Um, you know, just skin and bone. And power and came to, a power encounter came up. And everyone said, are you going to play? Are you going to play? So, Don't so, play. Power, so, so, so let me just tell you that. Power sorry. Encounter, was that the theme of the, or is that? Yeah, sorry. Power Encounter is the theme of our conference that we have oh, every yeah, year okay, okay. at church. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, and everyone was like, are you going to play? Are you sure? No, don't play. Don't play. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play. Yeah. But like everything in me, I was so, mm. I was so sick. Mm. Seriously, even like uh, two hours before the conference kicked off, I went to the barbers mm. um, and I passed out. Wow. Literally passed out in my barber shop. I woke up and there was about 10 people around me. Mm. And they said, are you okay? Do you want me to call an ambulance? I'm like, no, I'm fine. Clive, I got up from there and went straight to the conference. And I sat there thinking, do you know what? I don't even know if I'm going to make it through the first worship session. Mm. But if I'm going to die, I'm going to die playing the drums and giving my God glory. Wow. And the conference, the conference kicked off, Clive. I was, and I mean, you know what praise and worship is like, mm, you know, mm, mm. the conference is high gear. At Faith Dimensions, I know. It, I it's know. high gear, man. Clive. Mama, Sister Latoya <laughs> and so forth. And it's, yeah, I know, I know. Man, I was playing I those drums. I was playing those drums and literally from my head to my toe, I was in pain. Mm. I was in pain. I couldn't really even see. I think it was Auntie Norma leading the Friday. Mm. I couldn't even see her properly. You, wow. you know, everything was a daze. And I was playing, and the more I was hitting the cymbals, mm. the more I felt like my heart was going to stop. And I, I literally just had to make you a it. You were using everything you had. Everything. I literally, literally had to. But you could feel the, the life going. Yeah. But you I were think. determined to give God everything. Because wow. I, I literally, had, while I was playing, I had to mm. sit there and think, you know what, God, if I'm going to die right now, I'm going to die really banging these drums, mm. really. And I, you know, but I had to, because at those times, the devil speaks to you. You're not going to yes. make it. You're yeah. going to die, all this kind of stuff. But mm. right there, I had to switch and walk in faith. Mm. I had to draw back on my old testimonies that mm. I've been through in my life, thinking, okay, God, if you brought me through this, if you brought me through that, you're able to bring me through, mm. you know? And I carried on playing, carried on playing, the worship session finished, and I came off the stage, I sat down, and I literally just burst into tears. Wow. I just burst into tears because literally God had turned it. You know, mm. I, was still, I was still sick, mm. but I was alive. But you felt something, yeah. Yeah, I was alive. I was so grateful because five minutes before that, I knew what I felt, mm. you, you know, I was I was ready to give it in. But um, yeah, it was it was so unreal, Clive. It's so unreal. And my most, uh, what can I say? My most times where I'm most sick, mm. that's when I play harder. Right. That's when. I was going to ask you if have you had to adapt, use any different other techniques other than what other drummers would have to use to to help you play. Um, have you had to adapt any of the techniques or have you had to come up with anything for yourself that helps you get mm -hmm. by? No, to be honest with you, Clive, no, not at all. It's more of a mindset thing. Right. It's more of a mindset because, you know, you could be playing in church or playing the college. It's very draining anyway. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and, you know, 
yeah, sometimes I have to play with one arm because, you know, I'm hitting the ride and my hand will just get locked from cramp yeah, or, yeah. or my the bass drum leg would go with cramp. So I'd have that's to what I'm asking with... because that's what I'm asking because, you know, is your body susceptible to certain things like like stre muscle strain, easy, yeah. you, know, you lose strength or lose, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you know, like sure. when you're hitting the kick or the snare, you have to keep the same dexterity, the same exactly. velocity. You know, yeah. how do you maintain that? You know, because I know that's that's not easy. It's like yes. when I'm playing bass, you know, and I have to keep the same dexterity, the same velocity on the strings. Yeah. And then you got me. It's, it's a lot of concentration and that alone, you know what I mean? It, it is a lot of concentration. You know, the funny thing is, is sometimes when I'm feeling pain and I have to stand up and, you know, you're holding the cymbals. Mm. People are like, oh, he's really ministering. Look at him. <laughs> I'm like, no. Praise, praise. <laughs> Praise break. That's how you get out. Man. Praise break. Man. Just, <laughs> like that drum is in the zone. Yeah. No, man. I'm in some serious pain. <laughs> listen, but you know what, Darren? But listen, but even in that, you're giving yeah. it to God still. You know what I mean? That's what's fascinating about yeah. your story and your life, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, no. it's go on, go on, go on, go on. No, no, it, it's cool, man. It's just like... It's just, I, and to be honest with you, Clive, not only do I have to give God the glory, you know, but I have to thank my family because they've, they, you know, we, we've all had challenges, you know, in our family. Mum had cancer, then there was me with my health. But yeah. dad, has all, dad has always, you know, brought us up to be courageous, be mm. tenacious, don't give in, don't give up. You, you know, it's very easy to give up, you mm. know, it's very easy. You, you, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, I've been there where I've wanted mm. to give up, you know, I've wanted to die. But it's just like something just keeps driving me. Mm. No, no, excuse me. Not something. God keeps driving me. Yeah. Let, let, yeah. let me correct that. You yeah, know, yeah. He's, been my strength. He's, been, he's been my source. Mm. He, you, you know, um, you know, when I don't have anything to say, he understands my tears. Mm. You, you know, when I when I want to give up, he just gives me that scripture. He gives me a song. Yeah. You, you know, sometimes I'm at home and I'm in such agony, but a song would just drop in your spirit and you put it on YouTube or your stereo. Mm. Mm. And before you know it, you're dancing. Spirit of God ministering, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it happens in my most darkest times. Mm. You know, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Cl Clive, drums and me, man, we have this very special relationship. Listen. Very, my drums will understand me, I understand my drums. <laughs> brother, brother, I understand that connection right there, man. I understand that connection right there. I'm the same yeah. when I'm on my guitar or yeah. my bass guitar, you know. Um, there is a sweet fellowship that can yeah. be had yeah. when you're just playing on to the Lord. Yeah. I don't know if um, I guess everybody. I guess everybody has their own experiences. I mean, I was about to say I, I, I don't think anybody would understand what musicians experience when we mm. connect. But then um, I guess they would because anybody that's worshiping, because it's not about it's about worshiping. Yeah, and it's about true worship and that connection, sure. and not not forgetting the instrument. Mm. You know what I mean? Forgetting yeah. you putting the instrument aside. Yes, all right. I might be playing the instrument. Yeah, but it's not about the instrument. I understand the, the instrument, is just, isn't it? Yeah, it's That's it's it. not about the instrument. You know, um, I tell you something. You know, that just remind you of something. There's a a, a guy that I met through Ronnie Ronnie Francis. Okay um some years back um i think he worships at um i can't remember the church now but anyway his name is yummy okay yeah um and this guy when i first met yummy he was a drummer you know yeah and um well to say that this guy anything he just picks it up and he plays it <laughs> you know what i mean but when yeah. i first met him he was on drums, right? Okay. And then I went somewhere. We went somewhere. He went on keys. Went somewhere else. He was on bass. Wow. Went somewhere else. He's back on keys. Went somewhere else. So I said, I, I remember I said to him one time, I said, yummy. So how many instruments do you play? You know, he didn't answer how many. He just said, I'm a musician. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, so it's not about the instrument. No, it's Some not. Some people might no. be fascinated how many instruments and how well he plays. Yeah, or yeah. How well you play or how well I play. It's not about that. Yeah, the sure. Instrument aside, really. Yeah. 
it's you know it's about that connection and exactly. i can definitely hear from what you're saying and we we've, we've we've ministered together so yeah. i know i know yeah. i've seen i've seen you in action <laughs> well i like i i love ministering with you clive man i love ministering you know you, but listen listen you know i remember the last time i was at faith dimensions and you know um your mother um said to me you know can i stay you know in my heart i wanted to you know yeah yeah in my heart yeah um let's see what happens when we come out of lockdown man because i definitely will visit no you know man I mean? yeah, yeah you're, more, you're more than welcome man there, there's this it's just um you know when you, you know there's well i mean we're, we're digressing a bit now but there's some places where you just there's some fellowships you just walk into yeah you're at peace yeah you know and even when like we were talking earlier even when i first met you and you were 10 and your dad was in a community center mm. actually before he moved to milton Keynes. you know yeah it was the same you know yeah it, you just feel just feel peace and just feel a welcome it's not yeah. even like a, a welcoming at the door it just feels peace peace yeah 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 it just feel peace so when i that's why man i, I love i love ministry in that faith dimension oh no man we we, we love having you there. we love having yeah. you there man we, yeah we love having you there but um, we, listen i yeah. know you there's an, there's many strings um to your bow bro listen <laughs> you're also an author now just in short we've got yeah. five minutes tell people about the book and what it's about and where they can find it okay so the book is really about my journey the well, it's thirty-eight year journey because I wrote it two years ago now. Mm. Um, how I survived five kidney transplants and one, and basically it's a story of my life growing up from a youngster, the trials and tribulations of being the rebellious teenager, you, you know, but also having to deal with this life-threatening illness every day, you know, going to school and you know, just yeah, just being a teenager, but also you, you know, talking about would I ever find real love as a sick, uh, as a patient? You, you, you know, there's certain things that we look for, you know, we want to get married, we want to have children. But as, as I was growing up, I never thought these things would be possible. You, you know, I didn't think I would live long enough to be married. You know, I was told so many negative reports and yes, I almost died how many times over. Um, they told us we would never be able to have children naturally. Um, but, you know, thank God we have two beautiful daughters, Imani and Briella. Right. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a whole nother story right yeah, there. Yeah, you know? yeah, for real. Um, you, you know, so really it's my my heart and my spirit in a book. That's what yeah, it is. And it can be yeah. found on um, it can be found on Amazon it's just really to encourage, uplift every, anybody that reads it because, you know, not everybody has health issues, but we're all dealing with something. Mm. You, you know, everybody has something to go through in life and we have to make that choice. Either are we going to live? Or are we going to die? You, you, you know, and my dad always taught us, you know, life is about choices. Amen. Life is about choices. And, you know, we have to make that choice. No one can make it for us. Mm. You know, as much as people pray for us and, you know, support us and encourage us, we have to make up our minds to say, That's you right. know what, whatever I'm going through, health, finance, relationship, whatever, I'm going to win. And that's really what the book is about. Okay. Listen, people. Thank you for tuning in. Darren, bless you, man. Thank you for coming on this show. And Anytime, your heart yeah. And your life. And, um, you know, obviously, we're going to have you back on at another part. Listen, no Darren, you, you just let people know, you, you've got a knock coming up um, soon. So what, we, what I would like to do is obviously come back. Okay. We come back after and we can speak a little bit more in depth about that you no know? that's 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 absolutely fine bro that's absolutely fine and just to um answer patrick asked us a question about how many drums i play i only play the one you know i'm not a percussionist i'm a drummer um mm. and i play a yamaha a yamaha yamaha, I'm a yamaha, yamaha kit and i'm a zildjian cymbal man there you go um, and my uh my top drummer is calvin rogers calvin rogers the man calvin rogers is my guy Listen, Patrick, big up, man. <laughs> That's my man, Patrick Solomon. Listen, people, thank you very much for tuning in. Darren, bless you, man. 
Thank no, you very you. much. Jill no. Purpose, thank you for your support. I see you there. I see your, your little message at Awesome Interview. God bless you both. Thank you for your encouragement. Dual purpose, wherever you are, God bless you. Listen, people, please tune back in next week, Saturday. We will have another guest for you, and we'll be talking about another musician's life, how his life evolves behind the music, behind his talent, behind his gifting, and what's it all about. Listen, everybody, stay safe. Love everybody. Be kind to people. Whatever you're going through, listen, think about what would God want out of your situation? Mm. Put yeah. God first in your situation. Key. Don't think about yourself. Think about what would God possibly want out of mm. my situation? That's something for you to think about. God bless mm. you, everybody. Goodbye, you. Darren. Thank you, Stay there, Darren. Don't, don't sign off yet. We'll talk behind the scenes. God okay, bless you, everybody. Bless you.